Hello friend, Ben Ochart here. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today I want to set the record straight. I think some of you misunderstood me when I talked about water changes. Let's go ahead and get into it right now. I think when I've gotten into uh, suggesting the use of pre-filters to extend the amount of time between the maintenance of filters like canister filters or when I've gotten into deep substrates and how I feel that they can actually help with uh, things like beneficial bacteria and in particular when I talked about uh, when I talked about testing testing our water to make sure that we're not doing unnecessary water changes I think people might have uh, taken that to mean that they shouldn't do water changes as often, as regularly. Uh, maybe that they should uh, avoid or do fewer water changes. And, um, and they, may have, um, they may have gotten the impression that water changes are exclusively for the reduction of nitrates. And that's, just, that's not true. The truth is, is, that, is, is that water changes serve a variety of purposes. And one of them is the removing of hormone, furanome type products that fish can secrete, especially if you have a male tank, let's say you had a female in there, and it was uh, getting the, male, the males stirred up and creating aggression, uh, certainly reducing or removing those, those excretions, those, those furanome, the hormone type uh, products from the water would serve a purpose. Another thing to keep in mind is that minerals, which are vital to our fish and which over time settle in the aquarium and are no longer available to the fish through, their, you know, through the way that they osmoregulate, the way that they move things into their body, those minerals become unavailable as they settle to the bottom of the tank. And the only way to really replace those minerals is either with additives or with water changes. And of course, you do reduce nitrates. Assuming you're not getting a lot of nitrates out of your tap, right? You do reduce nitrates uh, when you do water changes. Now, how low do nitrates need to be? That's a topic for another video, right? But I'm, I'm, I'm hearing numbers as high as three, 400 parts per million before we really need to be concerned. But we'll talk about that in a different subject. I just want you to know that I think that water changes provide a lot of different benefits to an aquarium. My fish certainly look great after a water change. And as a matter of fact, I'm gonna take this opportunity to just share with you a little bit about how I do water changes. First of all, and uh, very importantly, I, I am not on the bucket brigade. I use a python. And this was a game changer for me. I actually found myself sometimes hesitant to, to do a water change because I didn't want to be lifting buckets. When I switched to a python, it just made a very big difference. So I drain the tank with a python and I don't do massive water changes. Maybe if I saw a, a, a sudden spike in nitrates or something like that, um, or maybe if I was trying to accelerate the removing of medication and using a combination of both charcoal and a large water change, that, that might facilitate that. But my water changes are usually about 30-40%. In some cases it should be lower if you have delicate fish like discus. Certainly fish like African cichlids, they can take 80-90% water changes and seem to do okay. And they actually seem to really enjoy water changes. They seem fired up after a water change. and. To me, it's always been like um, taking a room that's very, very stale and, and letting some fresh air in. And so it's gotta feel good. It's gotta really feel good. I mean, certainly if you've been in a room that was uh, you know, hot and stale, and you get out in the nice, cool, fresh air, it certainly feels good to you. And I think that that's probably what goes on with them. And um, I'm just guessing. I'm definitely not promoting putting off water changes and I am, I am actually a big advocate of the many benefits that water changes provide our fish. I use a python system. I drain the tank about 30 or 40 percent. 
and then I temperature match using a digital thermometer. I, I take the temperature of the tank and then I take the temperature of the tap until it's matched. Now, before filling the tank, if it's a tank that's a hundred gallons or less, I'll treat that tank with something like, um, like Fritz Complete, sometimes Seachem Prime. If the tank is over a hundred gallons, like the 210 you see, you see behind me, I'll go ahead and use uh, Safe, because with a quarter, just a quarter teaspoon, actually less than a quarter teaspoon, a quarter teaspoon will treat 300 gallons. So I take a quarter teaspoon and use two thirds of a quarter teaspoon in a cup of water, will treat this entire tank. I'll also add, talking about minerals, I'll add some Malawi Lake Salt, and Malawi Lake Salt from Seachem is not salt per se. It's not like Morden salt or kosher salt or aquarium salt. It's simply adding some trace minerals that the fish will be able to take in through, again, the the uh, regulate, you know, the, os the way that they osmosis or however it is, that they take in minerals, they will be able to uh, get some benefit from those minerals. And uh, Seachem sells a product that, that supposedly matches some of the mineral composition or, or combination and ratios that exist in Lake Malawi. How much does that have to be uh, exact? A lot of these fish have never been near Lake Malawi. Even though some of the ones in here are um, what you'd call F1, they're the offspring of parents that were taken from the lake. I temperature match, I treat the entire volume of the tank. When you, when you fill from the tap to the tank, for whatever reason, the uh, water conditioner companies recommend that you treat for the entire volume of the tank. And I think they're trying to prevent the uh, risk of any possible shock to the fish. Once that's done, I go ahead and, and do my normal wipe down of lights and glass and everything else and make sure everything is exactly the way I want it to be. Now, uh, I do some housekeeping before I, I, I do the water change. And by that, what I mean is I will clean the glass, uh, the inside panels of the glass. I'll, I'll clean the plants. I'll use a, a, you know, a, a, a sponge, a, you know, like a glass cleaning abrasive type sponge to clean the, the plastic plants, uh, take some of the algae off of them. Maybe do a very light, like a quarter inch raking of the sand just to turn it so it looks fresh. I don't go in deep. I don't like stirring the sand. Um, uh, I am trying to, uh, to grow some, some bacteria down there, so I don't want to disrupt it too much. But I will do a very light, uh, just a light uh, break of the top, which really doesn't go below a quarter inch. Very similar to what the fish are constantly doing, whether you have uh, geophagus or whether you have African cichlids, they're constantly you know, sifting the sand and turning it over about a quarter inch or so. So uh, I do some housekeeping, then I drain the tank to the level I want to take it, usually leaving the filters on and the heaters on because I don't lower the water level below the safe level of the heater. In most of my tanks, the heaters are uh, sideways, actually in two of the tanks, the heaters are near the bottom and horizontal, so there's no chance they're going to get uh, exposed and possibly uh, burn out. In the larger tank, in the 90 and the 210, the heaters are straight up and down, but they're in deep enough, uh, being fully submersible, that they're not going to be exposed to air and possibly uh, burn out. Always remember when you mess with heaters, when you put in a heater in a tank, wait about 15 to 30 minutes before plugging it in. When you're pulling a heater out of a tank, unplug it and wait 15 to 30 minutes before you pull it out of the tank. And uh, this will prevent you from uh, shattering or uh, you know, creating some kind of a problem with your heater. So at any rate, I lower the water to the desired level. Usually my filters are left on, except of course for the sump, because the uh, overflow of the sump, the weir near the top, is not gonna be able to, uh, it's not gonna have any water cascading through it because the water level is below that. So the, the sump is turned off, 
but other other filters like in in the other tanks the hang on back filters the expert matic filters and the fx6 on this tank are left on and uh, during the water change if i'm filling up a very large tank that's going to take a very long time i might stop in the middle of the fill up just to double check the temperature coming out of the tap to make sure that the temperature hasn't shifted sometimes uh, temperatures can change uh, somebody in the house turned on a dishwasher a, a washing machine someone's taking a hot shower whatever and it can affect maybe the, the temperature at the tap so if it's taking me 15 minutes 20 minutes to fill it i might stop around five or ten minutes double check make sure the temperature is staying true so uh at any rate just wanted to uh, clear the air and set the record straight uh there are many reasons why we do water changes not just the reduction of nitrates and i am a big advocate and i observe in my fish a noticeable improvement in both color and activity after a water change so i am a big promoter of water changes uh, do some people do them too often i'd rather you do them too often than not enough and i'll leave it at that if you have thoughts or comments about this subject comment below we all learn from each other around here and we can talk about this a little more at the cichlids and coffee live stream which is on saturdays at 11 o'clock central that's 9 a.m pacific noon eastern if you like the content of the channel be sure to give the video a thumbs up hit that subscription uh, uh, icon and that bell and if you'd like to support the channel further consider joining the garage gang the garage gang and uh and becoming a patron by uh the information about becoming a patron or going to uh or going to the patreon page is uh, located in the description under the video and uh, memberships are three dollars on up and you do get a sneak peek at content uh, before it's released and you also get some videos and content that is not available to the general public okay thank you for tuning in you are appreciated and i'll see you next time bye bye